The Deerfield River is very different between the middle and upper sections and its lower section in Deerfield when it goes into the Connecticut River. In the upper sections, it's flowing on this very, very hard rock like we see here at Shelburne Falls. Very hard rock is hard to erode. And so the valleys of streams tend to be quite narrow and even V-shaped canyons because they cannot widen out very easily. However, if we go downstream, we find that the river enters sedimentary rock of the Connecticut River Valley. That sedimentary rock is much weaker. The river is able to cut back and forth and widen its valley, so we have extensive floodplains as the river transitions from the hard rock, where it's narrow and V-shaped, to the soft rock, where it can widen out with the floodplain landscape. Most tributaries flow into their main stream facing downstream, adding their flow to the main river. The Deerfield, however, flows to the north, flowing right into the Connecticut. This has lots of implications for the lower Deerfield River Valley because every time there's a high flow, a flood, coming down the Connecticut River, it goes right into the lower Deerfield Valley, flooding that valley. So in terms of agriculture, the lower Deerfield gets the best of both worlds. It gets flooding from the Deerfield River and it also gets the flooding from the Connecticut River. So those floodwaters bring just the right siltiness of soil onto the floodplains to give you a very, very rich situation. Here in Shelburne Falls, we're standing at the potholes where the rocks are this beautiful, nice rock, which is a metamorphic rock. And you can see all the swirling bands of light and dark that represent the pressures of colliding continents. The rock that we're standing on was actually a magma chamber underneath a volcano or a series of volcanoes. This piece of the Earth was about to collide with North America the edge of North America at this time was over at Albany, New York. So we are an island. This was an island off the coast, maybe four or 500 miles offshore, and it was moving towards North America and eventually is going to collide. And when this piece comes in, it's going to create mountains and a lot of squeezing, compression. And the rocks that we see here are the result of all those squeezing forces, compressional stresses affecting the rocks, giving us the curves, the folds. We see the rocks so well exposed in Shelburne Falls because of the Deerfield River. The Deerfield has cut its way through the overlying layers and washed away the glacial sediment so that we see the rock exposed. As rivers flow across the landscape, when they find hard rocks and rocks that have some cracks in them, they can take stones, and the stones act as tools. The tools actually turn round and round and round in the cracks as the water flows over them. So the pressure of the flowing water causes all these river's tools here to vibrate and erode and start to cut a hole into the rock. Now, the bigger the hole becomes, the more tools can get trapped in the hole. And as you, the water flows across the area, these act as a drill to actually drill down through the rocks. Potholes are river form features and not glacier form features at all. In order to understand the story of the potholes, we need to go back to the glacial age. About 20,000 years ago, the ice was all the way down to Long Island Sound and out to Martha's Vineyard and Nantucket. And then the ice started to melt back. About 16,000 years ago, the ice margin was right here in the Shelburne Falls area, and it was continuing to melt back. In the Connecticut River Valley, we have a great glacial lake that was following the melting ice, and that's Glacial Lake Hitchcock. The Deerfield River flowed into Lake Hitchcock, and it built a very large delta. The delta plain was so large that it covered Shelburne Falls. So this whole area in our view was under gravel from the deposit of the delta, the big delta of the Deerfield River. Now we know that Lake Hitchcock drained about 14,000 years ago. So at 14,000 years ago, the Deerfield River started to cut down through those gravels that covered this whole area. And only then did it find itself on top of these hard, nice rocks. And so once that happened, it could flow over them, creating the waterfall and the pothole erosion that you've just seen. So these have all happened in the past 
14,000 years. You know, it's the geology of the valley that really makes everything else happen. In the lower valley, we can do extensive farming on these very, very rich floodplains. In the upper valley, we can build dams on narrow river reaches for reservoirs and hydropower. So it's a very unique valley. It has a lot of diversity, a lot of excitement, and the geology is really what makes it all happen.